Oversizing equipment versus undersizing equipment. Is it worse to oversize equipment or is it worse to undersize equipment? And why am I doing this video? Today I'm doing this video because I got people in my comments saying, never go down in size on equipment, but it's okay to go up in size. And I think that's a terrible mistake. And if you don't understand why oversizing equipment is much worse than undersizing, watch this video because I'm going to give you the experience that has taught me why oversizing is much worse than undersizing. Now, should you put a piece of equipment that is too small or too big for a house? No, you should not. You should go with the right size. And how do you do that? You do a J load. You figure out what the load of the structure is and then you match the load or capacity of the structure with the right capacity or size of the equipment that it needs. But why is oversizing so much worse than undersizing? When I go to a job, I never say, you need a bigger unit. And I often find that you always need to size down because the equipment that's pre-existing is usually oversized. The ductwork is usually too small for that equipment. The square footage is a lot less than what that equipment would require. And I'm always going down in size. But when I see a comment that says, never go down in size, I fear that you're making a big mistake, not only for yourself and your company, but also for the customer. Because not only are you shortening the life of the equipment, but you're also causing high electric bills. Equipment's failing, of course, it's not lasting as long. But the, the customer's comfort level is probably, it's terrible. So here's the reasons that you never want to oversize. So if I oversize a piece of equipment, then the likelihood of my wire that feeds or serves the existing equipment might not be a big enough wire for the oversized piece of equipment. Okay, if you oversize a piece of equipment, the likelihood of your ductwork actually working with that piece of equipment is slim to none. If you oversize a piece of equipment, not only is it gonna short cycle, but you're gonna have too much humidity. So now, you don't have enough wire, you don't have big enough ductwork, and you don't have, um, what was the last one? You don't have a big enough wire, you don't have big enough duct work, and humidity. you got too much humidity, okay? So that's, that's the deal with oversizing, okay? Um, then, because the duct work's too small, if it's gas, your heat exchanger gets too hot. You got too much of a temperature rise. You're tripping limit switches. You, you've got a, a temperature split that's not good in cooling either. So, and you can't really adjust to overcome that. But if you undersize, you can adjust to overcome that. You have a little room with those blower speeds, but when you oversize, usually you don't. Now, what happens if you undersize? If you undersize equipment, you have longer run times and maybe your electric bill's a little more. But when it comes to failing motors early in life and you having a motor, more motor failures, you having too much static pressure, you have too much temperature rise, what about a heat pump? If you oversize a heat pump, what happens during the heating mode when there's not enough air passing across the indoor coil? <gasps> High head pressure. What does that cause? Viscosity of the oil to break down. Compressor's no, long, no longer lubricated. You're tripping high head pressure. The unit's coming on for a few seconds. Head pressure gets real high. Boom, cuts the unit back off. Boom, cuts the unit back off. So oversizing is much worse than undersizing. And I hope that when you go to a job, you're not only measuring the duct work, but you're measuring the square footage, you're doing a J load, you're figuring out the load calc and what the capacity of the structure is, and then you're matching the capacity. But again, when I go to jobs, I rarely ever say, you need a bigger unit. No, I say, you need a smaller unit. And I've done this over a hundred times. I've been a part of a thousand or more projects so far. And with my experience, I never, I never want to oversize. I never want to undersize. You don't want to do that. You want to get the right size. But today I have to make this video because I've got people out there going, you never go down in size. You just go up in size and you change the duct work. Well, it was, you don't have to change the duct work because you could just go down a half a ton or a ton, whatever it is. And let me give you an example real quick. I go to a house and this is a real example, by the way. I go to a house last week there's a three ton unit there, okay? There's a thousand square foot. There's only seven six inch vents. There's only a 20 by 20 return grill. There's only a 12 inch duck. If I put a three ton on a return supply that is 12 inches, it's not gonna work. 
and it has only seven six inch vents, it's not gonna work. Three ton needs 16 inch return of supply, it needs 12 six inch vents, and it does around 1800 square foot, not a thousand square foot. But for some of you to go, never go down in size, you just cause the customer more problems and cause yourself problems and the company you work for problems because you're not doing the work that you need to, which is having a duculator, measuring the square footage, measuring the duct work, figuring out the capacity. It's very easy. But for you to say that undersizing is not the way to go, I've been to foam houses where they're having to tear out the walls and tear out the floors because somebody didn't know how to size a foam insulated house. They oversized the equipment, it short cycled, they had too much humidity, and then I had to come back in and I had to install new equipment. They had new equipment, the job was one year, two years old, and I'm doing this all the time. So please, if you haven't watched my video on how to size ductwork, you haven't uh, watched my video on how to size equipment, go check out those videos. They're members only. You can look at the short video or you can pay the $24.99 and you can have access to all those other videos plus those videos about sizing ductwork and equipment. We use .05 static, medium static, and uh, it always works. I do a reduced plenum system. I like to have a few different sizes. I like to size down my ductwork after taking about 30% uh, with my supply lines. So if you wanna learn more about this, check out my videos. Don't listen to these guys that are going, you never size down, you always go up because, well, it'll blow harder and it'll cool the house down faster. And they're going, and they're going you never size down because it won't cool the house. Well, how come there's over a hundred, there's hundreds of jobs out there where I've sized down a half a ton and I've sized down a whole ton. Why, why is there jobs out there where these customers are doing fine, their electric bills are lower and their efficiency is higher? You know what? If I gotta tell the customer to increase their insulation in their ceiling and get a little more insulation or replace their windows or ask them, hey, you getting a new roof? And they say, yeah, I'm getting a new roof. Take that in consideration. See if you can do that J load and size their equipment down and save them money, increase their efficiency. Oversizing versus undersizing. I hope this answered your question of which is worse. And I hope you have, have an idea of how you can be better in the field as an HVAC technician, as an HVAC business owner. You've been watching HVAC Tips for Technicians. I'm Tad and I'll keep you cool if you let me.